Welcome to the Life and Faith Podcast. I'm Dan. And I'm Josh. We're experiencing life and faith every day. And if you're listening, we hope you are too. We're talking about life, the Bible, family, news, all sorts of other stuff, all from the perspective of by faith believers. If you enjoy this conversation, like what you hear, like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. All right, welcome. First episode. Yeah, very, we're doing this. Very cool. I know we planned it maybe like a year ago, even. Yeah. Didn't we? We had con- this all started because we had conversations on the phone. We were like, we should. Other people should hear this. Yeah, we we should be recording right now. <laughs> we're so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it was just it was such a great like we had so many different topics that we were like, man, we should expound on this more. We should talk more about this and. So it just made sense, right? Yeah, yeah. No, like I would, we would have these conversations. I'd walk away feeling better, having talked about them. And you know, I'm sure that's the way we all work. You know, just hearing stuff talked out it helps. So, oh yeah, if we can be a help to people, that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, when I hear something that encourages me, uh, I I get excited about it. You yeah. know, when I hear a message that is correct, true, in line with the word. I get I'm I leave with more energy than than I had when I came. Yeah. And and what a what a boon especially in this time that we live in, right? There's lots of things to get you down, but um it's it's the conversations with people that help keep you going. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's just a cool uh, in the podcast space too like um I find I grew up as I when I was a kid I grew up um idolizing musicians Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm i wanted to be a musician wanted to uh be uh be a rock and roll singer or a rock and roll guitar player or just a guy who was in you know that you never heard of that made a lot of money doing it you know and so music i always felt like it was really really powerful encouraging it was a, a thing that i just dove into um and then one day i remembered thinking this really is asking more questions than it's answering Mm. Right. And then podcasts, it was like at that time we used to call it AM radio (laughs) and was like, get away from that. You don't want anyone. (laughs) You don't go anywhere near that. Now it's podcasting. And it's so like it's so much more because there's, you know, there's different ones for every type of person and there's different, you know what I mean? Topics. And, you know, if you find one you like, you can really dig into it and it feels um, encouraged like we were just talking encouraged excited uplifted all that good stuff yeah and it's funny you say that because a podcast has really taken off in the last decade or so but at the same time there's never been more available but also i'm constantly hearing people saying hey does anybody have any new podcasts like i'm looking for something else so there's there's definitely a a need a desire for it do you have ones that you regularly listen to i don't listen to a lot of podcasts but um I think primarily because I've used it as kind of a news source because I'm not a, you know, like regular channel TV, like the the historical way of getting your news. I like listening through podcasts and stuff like that. So like I listen to the Daily Wire. Um, I listen to uh, Stephen Crowder. But when I do listen to that, it's very rare. And I only like them in small doses, like even that form. Um, I can only take it in small doses. So I should probably really expand my horizons with podcasts i just don't have a lot of time as it is so. well you're a sports guy i would think that you would be into like all the sports ones right there's like gotta be i don't know what yeah. they are i'm sorry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no yeah back in the day i i well i i should say when i was younger i would listen to the radio a lot and listen to sports talk radio and stuff like that but not as not as much anymore like I find myself consuming, like when it comes to sports, I'll go and look something up on the internet real quick and then be done with it. But yeah, uh, that's not a bad idea. I should probably look into that. <laughs> <laughs> I hear these podcasts are popular now. Yeah. No, we, um, I listen to business podcasts. Um, I like Bigger Pockets and I like um, Marketplace uh, and I like, I kind of get into Robert Kiyosaki a little bit, but don't like him as much 
I mean, I, 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 don't, I just can't, I can't really listen to like a full episode. I listen to Graham Stephan. So yeah, basically like basically business podcasts primarily. And then I do listen to a few comedy podcasts. Like I kind of like mm. Conan O'Brien's podcast is pretty funny. Uh, the, the, the SNL one with Dave, um, with, um, David Spade and Dana Carvey is pretty good. Um, until they get into the political stuff, which Dana Carvey and them don't do as much, but Conan can tend to get into some of the political stuff. And I go, yeah. ah, I got to shut this off. I don't come to you for my political, you know, yeah, thing, you know, so that right with there the funny and, you know, <laughs> yeah, that, so that is what drives me to listen to what I, I listed earlier. Like those couple of podcasts is because I don't like listening to TV where it's all just like, you know, doom and gloom. There's a little bit of that just inherently, right, when you're talking about current events. But um, I really enjoy people putting a comedy twist on here's what's going on in the world, but here's also some things to make you laugh. Like, I I just think that's important. Like, we don't take, you know, there are serious things in life, but it doesn't mean you have to take everything super serious. Um, Absolutely. So that, that, that helps me. It may not help other people, Other, you know, everybody's different how they like to receive information news but i really love a comedy spin on it for sure yeah my, i could be wrong about this but i assess my dad as uh a person who does not think it's does not appreciate jokes yeah. about it because yeah. he takes it so seriously how can you joke about this how can you joke about this yeah. right and i get that i i get that too you yeah. know yeah. um i also think i have a little bit of if I don't laugh, I'll cry. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'll just be yeah. like, and I have, I do have to shut the news off occasionally, you mm-hmm. know, cause I, I will find myself, uh, getting, um, angry or yeah. depressed or, um, yeah. Feeling like hopeless. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Too much of any good thing can be a bad thing. Even if we're categorizing that as a good thing, right? It can be a bad thing. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, I was going to mention the pour over. Have you heard about the pour over? Do you know about that? No. Like when I think of pour over, I think of like a pour over coffee. Exactly. Uh, okay. So that's the theme. Okay. But it's news seven to eight minutes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all from the Christian perspective. Mm-hmm. And it's a podcast and an email. And that's it. Yeah. No videos, no spin. I love it. Yeah. Because I'm interested in the news, but I'm always have to, I always have to, even with local news, mm-hmm. have to remind myself. Okay, wait a minute. This is as they say on the on the pour over pretty regularly. They'll say, like for example, the other day it was the coronation of the of King Charles. Oh yeah. He yeah. says this is important, but it's not. God of the universe important. Yeah. Okay, it's probably which I don't... not as important as most people make it out to be. Right. Well, yeah. I don't heighten up the King of England in that way, but they just make the point like sometimes things can seem really important yeah. and they are important, but let's have it in perspective and that's what this news thing will do. There's another one that they don't have a podcast but it's called For What It's Worth that's tied to that. Um I think I think it's a Christian perspective for what it's worth, but that's more of a business related one. And then there's another one called 1440, which is not from a Christian perspective, but the same principle, which is no frills, sim- no frills, simply the news, which I love that, mm-hmm. you know, because I want to know what's going on. I'm interested in world affairs. I'm interested in world history, American history. You know those kinds of things. I want to be a, a, a I want to be adept and everything, but I do not want to let it consume me. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can so easily get into that. Yeah, it's a balance. Yeah, yeah. Something you said earlier it reminded me. Um, one of the most memorable things that somebody has told me over the course of my life that has stuck with me is this principle of you know big people what what we would view as truly big people they take these seemingly big events or big things of life and they have the ability to make them small and whereas on the flip side uh little people you know for we're speaking um metaphorically here when you say big and little do you mean big as in 
high achievers or do you mean and little as in like unimportant or what, what do you mean by big and little i mean like people who at the end of the day the people that really should matter most to us right like we think of big people as being like celebrities you know like the the big name people doesn't necessarily mean that they're truly big people um because of the last part of this and that is little people can take the tiniest of things and make them bigger in the sense of like in a bad way right you take something that's supposed to be really a non-issue and they make it a big issue um something that shouldn't be uh, at the grand scheme of things like you know getting i can't think of an example right now i think the only thing that pops into my mind uh probably because of our line of work and that is like getting a refund or something like that you know like to some people that may be a big deal like maybe they're trying to they're pinching their pennies and uh ten dollars makes a big difference but if they want a refund of ten dollars you think like man at the grand scheme of things like take take um a christian for example like is is me going into walmart and throwing a big fit over a ten dollar refund and potentially like say if i try to go back there next week and i have an opportunity to witness to somebody um i'm hindered by that because of the big fit that i threw over ten dollars and they're like this this guy you know ten dollars means more to him than even this conversation right now about you know life and eternal life so going back to the quote it's just seemingly like the the best kind of people or really the people that we should look up to they have this innate ability to take even the things that seem like earth shattering to us at first they put it in the proper perspective i guess that's really what that quote hinges on is perspective um sometimes things are really a big deal or sometimes they're they they really are a small thing but being able to talk about those things in the proper perspective um not right there in the moment sometimes it's hard to think about them in the moment but later on thinking about them in a bigger way that's that's really what I, what that quote means and something you had said earlier reminded me of that like you don't want to just have people directing your course of thinking right when you were saying no frills with your podcast how you consume your news so yeah absolutely so i've been talking to this guy about a business thing and we and I make an appointment with him because he works the same hours that I do so I say okay Friday at 1 30 call me we can and I and I'll tell everybody at work like just for a little context we don't always get lunches right when the time for lunch occurs sometimes yeah. you have to adjust mm -hmm. But I go, okay, I got to make a, I have a lunch appointment at 1.30, so I have to be done doing whatever I'm doing at 1.30. I have a hard stop. Okay. So I make the appointment. The guy, last week, not yesterday, but last week, he is 15 minutes late calling me. Mm. He do, he wasn't going to call me. And then, I, and then I emailed, and I'm like, hey, are we still on? <laughs> so... Yeah. I'm like, okay, whatever. He calls. We have a 10-minute conversation. I go back to work. No big thing. I say, okay, I'm going to do this, do that, email you this, email you that. We'll talk again next Friday. Call me at 1.30. And um, so I email him and everything. The week goes by. Friday, I say the same thing. Okay, I got a 1.30. I got a hard stop. Sure enough. Doesn't call me. Doesn't call you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I go, okay. But then it's that challenge, right? It's like, what's the appropriate response here? Mm -hmm. Do I really need this person? I kind of need this person. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I don't. Yeah. But it would be great if I did, if I had this relationship with this person. But I have this opportunity right now to either respond with like, oh, apparently our goals are not the same. <laughs> yeah. Or I could be like, no, it's okay. It's cool, man. See, but then there's this other thing where when I was younger, I never valued myself the way that I should have. Hmm. So now that I'm in my 40s, I'm going, okay, I'm going to give myself some respect. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not in a 
not in a way where I don't value others higher than myself. Right. But I'm also not going to say it's okay when it really isn't okay. Yeah. So then you have that moment or that, that sort of apex where like you have an option to respond in a specific way here. So what's the right way to respond? You know what I mean? And so big people can make that big thing seem small, mm-hmm. but there's a little bit of me oh, yeah. that's wanting to make a big <laughs> big deal about this yeah. one and go, I just want to be rude to the guy. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and I don't, and it's, I mean, I'm not uh, gonna be yeah. rude to him, but there's a large part of me that if he would have been in my presence at that moment, at that moment of weakness, I would have had that $10 Walmart freak out yeah. a little bit. Maybe not a freak out, but I definitely would have made it clear. I'm offended by this. Mm-hmm. You wasted my time. You inconvenienced. I inconvenienced people I work with. Not that they're that broke broke up about it. Yeah. But it's the idea. Like mm-hmm. I went to my, I went to the level that I needed to go to for the situation, and you blew me off. Right. Because you, but I'm, your goals aren't the same as mine. Mm-hmm. Whatever they are, maybe he had a legitimate reason. Yeah. Maybe his kid's sick. Yeah. I'm telling you what, if my kid is sick and I blow you off, I'm going to say, sorry, buddy. Like I should have wrote you or called you or something, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I, you and know. thinking, even thinking about that from both sides, maybe you make the conscious decision. Like I'm not going to continue to work with this guy if that's the way it is. But at the same time, you're not blowing up. Like you said, and, and you, you know, you could do that. And that's the temptation for all of us, right? To, whatever is going on in our mind to speak it out loud um, rather than run it through those filters. Like you, you just kind of verbalize that, right? You're thinking I could respond this way, but I should choose instead to respond this way. And you can still alter your course of saying, maybe I should move away from working with this guy. Cause if that's the way it's going to be, because that's how life works, right? If, if somebody's not willing to work with us on our terms, a lot of times, especially in business, right? We can't afford to continue surrounding ourselves with those kinds of people. You give them a chance, right? Sometimes we give them a second chance. But ultimately, to continue to give that same person the same chance, that many more chances, then you're, at, at best, you're enabling them. Well, yeah. I allowing them it, to steal more of your time. I, I, I try to, if I'm if I'm wise. Yeah. If, if the it's Lord's wisdom is... <laughs> is is upon me in that moment. <laughs> exactly. If I'm actually have right thinking about something, I try to weigh, I try to switch places with myself and this other person, whatever yeah. the scenario is with me and the Lord. Yeah. Giving them go, the benefit of a doubt too. Yeah. Well, I go, how many chances did he give me? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a parable in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. If only somebody wrote it in a book. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> That's a good example. Yeah. yeah. Well, I go, okay, how many chances did he actually... Okay. So what's the right response mm-hmm. to that situation? Somebody blows you off or somebody is clearly irresponsible... And that's, I'm not saying this person is that irresponsible. Like I say, I don't know what... The yeah, you don't know what they're characterized around. by. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So it could be... A, le- a legitimate excuse. I have not heard from him. He hasn't emailed me or not, or anything like that. So, okay, so that's a possibility. But um, I also, like, I don't want to be anybody's fool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the line we ride as people, right? You don't want to be taken advantage of. And that's a lot where our response kicks in. Uh, it's almost like a, flighter, uh, a fight or flight uh, symptom where you you say I'm not going to take this you know and you, you, the the initial impulse is to react um, but you know like the Bible says right being slow to speak slow to wrath um, even in situations like that where like anybody wouldn't blame you 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 would be justified in reacting this way but um, you know like I said in that quote uh, a big person so to speak. Um, will take those even even those high stress situations and make them small. It doesn't mean that you take abuse, but you still in your mind you can you can think of it in the proper perspective. Yeah, uh, I'm and actually I'm having these thoughts about how to deal with this situation as we're talking about it because I mm-hmm. really hadn't thought about the fact that <laughs> I, I was real I was probably 
I was probably channeling my wife there because my wife is very good at at people. She's very um, understanding. She loves everybody. Everybody loves her. It's like she's never met. Uh, everybody she meets is her best friend. Mm-hmm. She's just that's the kind of person she is. So whereas I am more, I would say, guarding myself against people a lot. Sure. Like I, I'm just not the kind of person who is going to necessarily trust somebody implicitly or get personally inv- I definitely like for example I don't recommend people for work yeah I even I mean unless like unless I'm socially pressured to do so yeah or unless I am really absolutely sure would take a bullet for this person yeah then I would not rec- you know what I mean yep. so where no, Sheila is yeah. like oh there's a person mm-hmm. who who you know can lift a box. <laughs> that person held the door open for me the other day. I think they'd be a great fit. <laughs> oh, I know that she is looking for, and like, okay, we have, I have a friend who I was friends with in elementary school. This story is 100% true. I have a friend in elementary school. We grow up together. We're friends as adults. I meet my wife. We get married. She works a job at a place called Arcadia. She goes to the job. One day, she meets this girl, woman, and she says, oh, you'd be great for my husband's friend. Oh. <laughs> she does not go back to day two. Mm-hmm. Doesn't go back to work the second day. Hates the job. Doesn't go back to work. Still keeps the number introduces the couple they have two kids they've been married for like 15 years <laughs> oh wow because she's just as a people person that's yeah she, yeah yeah you know so anyway all that to say i digress but the um but the point i was making is that she's easily understanding mm-hmm. yeah she she finds she her spiritual gift is like is being like hospitable hospitality yeah, right hospitality, she yeah. can definitely do that better mm-hmm. than anybody i know right and mm-hmm. uh so anyway for her that comes easy for me it's very difficult yeah you mm-hmm. know because i just go okay this person's probably gonna take advantage of me hurt me you know take yeah. something from me let me down whatever i i invariably yeah. am skeptical of many things but people <laughs> and, and that can work out really good for you guys as you know in a marriage you can balance each other out really well in that. Like you keep the, you, you kind of have the tendency to keep people at arm's length until, you know, you, you feel like you can trust them. And, and she's very welcoming, like second she meets you. Right. And, uh, having, having a good balance of that is, is great for any family. Yeah. I look up to her in that way. Mm -hmm. Like if that's something that I would like to be more of, if I, if I am that way with people, um, it's in the midst of not being that way, right? It's yeah. like I'm pushing myself through an experience yeah. because I know it's good for me mm-hmm. to be like, for example, in a room full of strangers, mm-hmm. right? Um, we get involved in some of the local events that are like whatever conservative groups like Right to Life or... Um, we do work with a veterans thing that often will put us in a room with a lot of Republicans and, um, and it, it, it just is literally, I, I can't, it's not my thing, you know, sitting here talking to you who I know well mm-hmm. and putting it onto the internet where there's <laughs> a screen, millions and billions of lines of wire. Yeah. And another screen, I can handle that. <laughs> Lots of separation, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in front of a live studio, uh, even even playing at church, like that's fine. I can do that. Mm-hmm. There are people in the room and everything, but I have the guitar in front of me or the drum set in front of me. If I just ha- if I had to put the instrument down and sing, which I don't have a problem with singing, but if there wasn't an instrument there, yeah. I would feel incredibly vulnerable. Yeah, you know. So that's sort of like just my personality. But like you said, it balances out because she can handle it so for example when we bought this house you know i was absolutely nervous couldn't hardly sleep 
you know, what if it does this? What if it does that? Worry, worry, worry. Whereas she was like, this is my house. Yeah. <laughs> she the Lord was, she was claiming me. it. Yeah. yeah. She was like, she just, the Lord made her aware of it, you know? Yeah. So it's like you said, that balance, you know? Yeah. It's really, it is good. You know, I definitely look up to her and definitely, um, you know, she, she inspires me and makes me want to be a better person, you yeah. know, and that kind of thing. So it's really uh, been a, been quite an experience. We've been married, um, I think around the neighborhood of 12 years, 12 oh. or 14. I think 2000. You're right, Dan. She's going to be listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we used to have a blanket that hung in our uh, in our bedroom that we got from one of her um, one of her relatives knit it, made a blanket for us and stitched our uh, wedding anniversary date oh, in it. Yeah. And so we'd be like looking yeah. over at the blanket. Oh yeah, two thousand blanket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for that blanket, I'd be like, oh, no, I, I, two thousand eleven. So that makes it uh, uh, twelve years, right? It'll be twelve years in August. So yeah. So, yeah, going strong, yeah. you know. So that's great. So that's good. They say I think I I heard somewhere one time like if you can get past like the initial like I don't know I want to say it's within like four five six like those are that's like the big hurdle for most marriages like if you can last past that point they say you know generally it's it's uh uphill. From there, or maybe maybe downhill. Downhill, will yeah, be the downhill. Easier way. It's all yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm there. looking for. Yeah, <laughs> you get yeah. through that honeymoon phase, and then the, it's uphill till you get to that six it's year a treadmill point. of yeah. pain. After yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe for some people, but yeah, <laughs> ideally, you marry the right person. Yeah, you get past that initial hump, and <laughs> you you get into the uh, supposedly the golden years of your marriage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I definitely. Um, look for I look forward to our, to being able to spend time with her. I, I'm I she's my best friend. It's like I just want to on my days off just hang out with her. Yeah, you know. Um, well, it should be. Yeah, it, I agree. You know, we we are um, in it together. We're shoulder to shoulder on so many so many experiences we've had over the years where um, things get tough or whatever, and we could choose to sort of. Uh, be angry with each other or fight or whatever and we don't you know we yeah. we find a way to to like i say be shoulder to shoulder on most things you know um even if we don't agree um when our son was little it was hard because we had um mostly because of me but we had difficulties because we had different opinions about how we should raise him yeah yeah and so that was a little tough, you know, but he's, you know, almost an adult now. So that chapter is basically closed. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're we done through it. We're not done raising him, but we're pretty well done. Sure. You know, we're on the, we're on the, on the, yeah. on the back end of that, you know, mm-hmm. and then, and that's, I'm just excited as, as can be for this next chapter because I look at it like, you know, whatever you decide to do, um, I'm looking forward to all the, all the way way we'll be able to bless others in this time um all the different uh possibilities you know i'm a person who who believes that um believes that anything within reason is possible Mm -hmm. yeah you know so i don't look at things like i i do see challenges of course but i'm just saying if she came to me tomorrow and said i want to do this thing Mm-hmm. then I'd be totally behind her. Yeah. She does the same thing with me. I mean, mm-hmm. this podcast, for example. Yeah, good example. It's a, it's <laughs> another one of those things where I was like, I <laughs> I just get interested in something and then mm-hmm. I just tackle it, you know, yeah. and then I just try it. And then she, she'll she be like, here we go again, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she's always supportive and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you guys have that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, so my wife and I, we will be married uh, 10 years uh, this coming July. Um, and so, you know, 10 years, that's an easier one for me to remember. Um, (laughs) not always super on top of it, but yeah, this one's an easy one, but yeah, uh, we, we have that dynamic for sure. Stacy and I are very much, um, I view us as complementary personalities. We complement each other well. Um, and like I was alluding to earlier, that balance that you bring to the table, um, 
you know, there's a principle in here that I've talked about a lot uh, with other people, and that is um, God gives us all innate strengths, right? And those same strengths that he gives us can easily also be weaknesses if they're not harnessed in the right way, if they're not used in the right way. Um, you know, we're operating in the flesh, like the Bible talks about, um, then certain things become weaknesses that if we were operating in the spirit, you know, the way that God intended for us to operate, um, they would be great strengths to us. So I very much see that play out in the dynamic of marriage. And I think that's that's got to be one of the main reasons why God instituted marriage in the first place is because it's so, it's a reflection of you and, and just at your most vulnerable state, right? So if I look back at any, um, arguments or any any like low points in my marriage, I can see like that was just these two things that God meant to complement each other really well. They weren't like, for example, um, they weren't something that say in the moment I was just being selfish or I was being prideful about something. I can very much see how we were supposed to work together in that issue, but I chose to go the wrong route or something like that. Or you know, it, it can happen both ways obviously, but, um, I'd probably say like more times than not, it was me <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that's a good answer. Buddy. So yeah. And, and, but you recognize those things about yourself and that's, that's really the beauty of marriage. If it's working out well, is you notice those things about yourself and you say, you know, we really balance each other out really well, but you also see that when there's contention, you see, okay, we're different on this, but that doesn't mean like, doesn't mean we have to fight about this. I, I a, a huge portion of marriage that I found out is you learn how to disagree with each other. You're going to disagree because you're two different people, right? Like God designs marriage for us to be one flesh, to be one person, but at the same time you're you're two different people trying to fit that mold. So, um, yeah, just trying to understand it in that perspective is really good. I think so. We yeah. we we do have that to some degree. That's good. Uh, by virtue of not giving up, you will succeed, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. just go, okay, this, this is hard or this challenge has come up or this is something we don't know how to figure out just yet. Or maybe like you really mess up <laughs> uh, and you're just like, okay, is this it? No? Yeah. Okay, well, I've got to go to work. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think over the course of marriage, you learn how to work through those things. And the next time you're faced with something similar, you're like, okay, we've been through something like this before, and, and you're able to work it out quicker, you know. And um, you you start – really, it hinges on trust. Like I know in our line of work, a lot of times they talk about – trust in the business sense but you know trust goes through every aspect of our lives um especially you know i think to the degree of how big a relationship is in your life that's the degree of trust that you need for that and so in marriage as you it, it just takes time and like i was saying earlier about the kind of that hurdle that first hurdle of marriage you got to get that past that certain point of being married and a, as time goes on if you're both working at it, both striving together, like the Bible talks about, um, the trust just forms naturally. And even though you go through those hard times, you say, you know what, this in the moment, there's a temptation, kind of like what we said at the beginning of the podcast, right, about making things in the proper perspective, right? Big people making things seem small. Um, you can, you naturally start thinking, you know what, I, I feel like this person's coming across this way, but I think they didn't intend to come across that way. You give them the benefit of the doubt, um, and, and you do that in your marriage, right? But you do that with any relationship, and you start to say, I'm going to choose to think better of this person rather than the worst of this person. into your mindset um it's revolutionary right like you, your relationships get so much better when you can say i'm going even though i'm putting myself in a vulnerable position trusting this person about this i'm going to wait it out see it come out through the other side 
even if I was right in saying maybe we shouldn't do this and you just let a situation play out, many times that forms trust because uh, I'll say this, for example, Dan, have you ever been through a situation where something fails, maybe that was your idea, and a person that you're close to, like I won't necessarily say it in marriage, but just in any situation, right, to where they could be in a position to say, I told you so. And they didn't, and you recognize they could be telling me I told you so right now, and they're not, and God bless them for it, right? (laughs) Well, this person could bury me right now, and I Mm. think they know. (laughs) Yeah, and and it's almost like the other person comes to the point where they say, I don't have to tell them that right now because I I can sense they already know that, so why why kick a person when they're down? Yeah, Um, in my... 20s and 30s well before I met my wife um I had never I'd always worked in big cities and worked in places where if you drop dead they'd just sweep you off the floor and put somebody else in your place Mm -hmm. so it was always kind of like that and I didn't actually know until after well after I became a Christian that relationships didn't work that way Yeah, yeah I didn't know about this whole treating other people and give I didn't know about um, not to say that my family didn't instill that in me because they did. It wasn't mm-hmm. like my family life was that terrible or anything. I just mean I didn't pick up on it. Um, but I but that was a new concept to me. Yeah, right. It was like, oh, it's not kill or be killed. It's not get everything for yourself and and anybody else can. You know what I mean? Like I didn't realize that relationships could actually function in a positive way in that, in, in that positive way. Yeah. Um, one point you made, I wanted to add to was when you were talking about the day to day with your, with your wife or even in friendships or whatever, in any relationship, you have to, you, you do yourself a favor by paying into the relationship. Yeah. Yep. And not always taking from it. Yep. Right. Because, we have a tendency to... There's a balance in a relationship. Like, not talking like uh, balancing like a weight or anything like that, but like like you would balance a checkbook, right? There's a a balance, uh, not financially, but in a relationship-wise. Like, if you're taking out more than you put in, you're, you're going to bankrupt that relationship, right? Yeah. That's where you're going with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And when, a, when you're talking about a marriage, that's why I think things like date nights mm-hmm. and compliments and stuff like that are so important, you know, um, because like, say for example, a little text and I, I'm mm-hmm. not telling you this to build myself up, but one thing I like to do is I like to send my wife songs, mm-hmm. right. That say what, again, probably like grew up on music, you know, grew up in the eighties and nineties when like you know, th- those are my, that's like bread and butter for yeah, pop songs. To right? go to. Yeah. Yeah. So I go and I find like a country song, you know, she grew up in sort of the same time frame, obviously much younger than me, as I alluded to earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so much younger. No, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to butter. He's you got up, the brownie baby. points. I know, I know you're here. Yeah. I'm just trying to get some brownie points, baby. Uh, no. So anyway, I do that occasionally. I'll just send her a little text or a little something, a little message that just says, hey, I'm thinking about you. I hope you're having a good day, that kind of thing. Just because, you know, those little things yeah. go a long way when you make big mistakes, which are inevitable, right? We're just going to be making mistakes here and there. Some days they're bigger than others. Hopefully they're not that big, but, you know, you're – and and when you say – when you said paying in and like a balance – I don't mean it in such a way that it's a works-based acceptance, but I just mean that in order to have a pleasant life Mm -hmm. or to have a pleasant marriage or a strong marriage, one that can withstand being knocked on its heel, uh, knocked back on its heels occasionally, you need to sort of have those, um, you need to build those fortification of love and trust is a big one. And um, your trust, I think too, it comes down to, Um, knowing, like you said, the intention of the person. And that leads me to the other point I wanted to make about that, which is in those moments, I want to be judged on my best day. Yeah. Not on my worst day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Because my worst day, 
uh, I'm, you know, I probably won't be married. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on your worst day, if that had to be your wedding day, it wouldn't have happened, right? <laughs> they would have been, they would have been I like, can relate. I think we should consider, reconsider. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, definitely have had enough worse days over the years, even before this marriage or before my relationship with my wife, um, to where I just, I realize like, I'm capable of disappointing someone to a great degree. It stands to reason somebody else would be capable of doing that as well. I would want to be judged based on my intention. And yeah, that was a mistake. And maybe I didn't mean to do it or maybe I meant to do it, but I would like to be forgiven for it. Um, do you get what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, you kind of want that. In that moment, I would like you to measure me against this good day that I had here. Yeah. Remember that time when I did that really nice thing and I sent you that text mm-hmm. that said I love you and all that stuff? Okay, yeah. remember that because I just made this mistake. Yep. Or No, that's a good you know, point. Um, I've thought about this a lot. Like This applies to any marriage, right? You, a marriage is both about um, trying to forgive people. You, know, you, you, you forgive that other person when they make mistakes. But it's more than just forgiveness. It's it's kind of what I think you're getting at here, and that is remembering the good things that those people. Do. It's easy to keep record of wrong, right? That's just inherent in all of our nature. It doesn't matter like how much we mask ourselves or how much we grow as as people as Christians. Um, we all have a tendency to keep record of wrong, kind of. Um, there's a joke in there somewhere about how you know women have an innate ability to remember historically like <laughs> at this point at this date at this specific time you were wearing a checkered shirt and you said this to me and the moon was at this point in the sky you know like like all this uh, but you know we, we joke about that but you know men and women are both kind of guilty of that we can we can take that record of wrong but obviously, like the biblical model is, you know, God doesn't keep a record of our wrongs if we've, if we've had, uh, you know, it's under the blood if if we've had um, that personal walk with Christ. You know, that is where He says He's cast it as far as the east is from the west. And you know, I feel like I keep going back to this, like these biblical examples. But if we're talking about marriage, you know, marriage is that picture of Christ in the church, right? Uh, the bride of Christ. So if we are to be a picture of that, um, man, what better picture than to say, you know, here's all these wrongs, but I'm going to choose to forget about them. I'm going to choose to think of the good things in you rather than the bad things. And that's, is is it much easier said than done? Absolutely. <laughs> but, you, you know, if you think about it, like we said, with that proper perspective of we're ultimately a picture of Christ and the church. Mm-hmm. That's what we should be doing. And nine times out of ten, it is actually easy. It is actually worrying about something that isn't happening or yeah. being offended about something that isn't really that big of a deal or, you know what I mean, making a big thing out of a little thing. Yeah, yeah. You mm-hmm. know, because those marriage arguments can be, like, on the heels of a tough day at work or an argument with another person that isn't your wife. And then you come home and you go, this person will love me no matter what. So I'm just going to say what I feel, which is I'm angry right now because of this other thing. Yes. And they're going to forgive me because they know that I, you know, you yep. just borrow a little Easy of that trust. Do. and <laughs> yep. you're, Yeah. You're uh, like, I'm in a, a taking mood. Like you, you wouldn't say this, right. But subconsciously we're, it's one of those rough days where we're taking, we're in a taking mood, not a giving mood. Ab- yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, somebody said the other day, I heard somebody talking about how embracing pain is actually a a Christ-like thing. Mm. Like, yeah. you are offended by the situation with your wife or something happens and then you have a pain from it. Again, not to say that you should allow yourself to be a doormat, but I'm just saying Christ's example was he took on the pain, he embraced it, right? If we're living a life that is in him, a life in faith, 
right? Sometimes that means we got to not keep a record of a wrong. Yeah, yeah. And that's in a marriage and in a regular friendship. Yeah. Or a relationship, right? A friendship or a, a family member or something like that. You know, and that goes back to what I was saying about when I'm being wise, when I'm when I'm firing on all cylinders, then uh, um, then I recognize it in in light of what he has done for me. Right. Yeah. And not yeah. in light of what someone has done to me. Yeah. Does that make sense? And no, yeah, you're hitting at the heart of that perspective of big people making things small. The only way that we're truly able to do that is with the proper perspective of Christ. Because if he has um if he has taken something so huge, like there's there's nothing bigger that flies in the face of a holy God than sin itself, right? And if he could put all that on his only son and then forgive it because of his son's sake, then man, the, every, the biggest things in our lives, we can do the same thing if, if he was able to do it for us. It doesn't make it easy, right? <laughs> it's very hard to do that because uh, we just, we don't do that naturally. But yeah, that, that's the perspective. We're only able to make the largest of things small because God took the worst in us and and basically made it null and void, you know, as Christians. When you think about everything he went through to take it on him, truly innocent, um, it kind of makes, you know, what the stock market's doing yeah. a little less yeah. critical. Yeah. And I don't I don't know about you, like certainly for me, if I'm in those down moments where I should be think like the times where I need to think about that perspective the most when I'm down about something, it's typically, I'm typically in a headspace where I'm thinking, you know, other people have all this. I don't have that. Like I'm thinking about what I don't have. Right. I'm, I'm consumed by, I don't have this. I don't have this going for me. I wish this was better. And, and, and so trying to think about what you do have, that's, that's the total 180 that is difficult um, because how do we arrive at the point of thinking that perspective of what Christ has done for us? We have to do that 180 where we think about, here's what I have been given. And when you think about what you have been given, especially for those that are believers, um, we've, we've been given more than we could ever have asked for, more than we deserve. Far Like, you know, old Dave Ramsey uh, quote, but how are you doing? Better than I deserve. Than I deserve. But that is, it sounds, you know, cliche to say that, but it's so true. Um, we, we have been given. And so, but I, I go back to saying, I go back to that point I was saying earlier, like in that moment where you're really struggling, maybe you're battling through even depression, the mind goes to what you don't have rather than what you do have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, when I was, I want to say around 16 or 17, I, I guess just the short version is I considered myself an atheist, although I really wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, but it led, I was in this weird place when I was a teenager for reasons I won't get into now where I was really depressed, you know, and, uh, I kind of was navel gazing and, and I remember talking to my dad about it and he just very matter of factly was like, yeah, you're thinking about yourself. <laughs> and it was so funny because I was, Yeah, you know, and yeah. then, um, wise words from dad. Right? Yeah. It was kind of like dad was not saying that from a Christian perspective. He was just making the point about, you know, introspection. Joseph Prince says this introspection is a sure road to depression. Yeah, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. you'll 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 just introspection can be good, but you can get lost in it real quick, right? Yeah, absolutely. So his point was like, if you really, if you're feeling run down or 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 you know, you just things aren't going your way, maybe like stop thinking about yourself a little bit and start doing something for other people. You know, I I think, um, and the the podcast episode that we'll get to eventually. <laughs> This is an episode in and of itself. Yeah, it is. About life. 
life and faith. Yeah. So um, when you look at the whole message of the word, when it gets to like, when it gets to the point where um, the church is, okay, God's done everything. Christ has come back. He's ascended. Paul has come along. He said all the crazy things that Paul said, you know, and then it gets to like first Peter and, you know, Timothy and all this stuff. You really see the message is exalt the humble, like, yeah, do things, show your love for the Lord by serving others, yeah. serve the down, serve the down of the low. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. It, that, bear one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens, right? Yeah. Don't keep a record of wrongs. It's so cool, and I'm probably going to say this a hundred times in this podcast, but or in many podcasts because I say it all the time. Yeah. But it's at that moment in the word, or in in the world, or in world history, or in in say okay, even if you're not a believer, if you think about it like this, some group of crazy people wrote this thing called the Bible. For no reason at all, over 1,500 years, 45 authors, most of whom never knew each other, wrote 66 books, you know, Mm -hmm. just out of happenstance, these crazy people. If you're not a believer, that's where you're going with, okay? If you look at that message. humor it. Yeah, well, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, the improbable became probable, but whatever. Anyway, uh, so at the end, at the very end, they could choose to say anything they want. Yeah. They could Mm -hmm. say death to the infidels mm-hmm. they could say make sure you bring cheesy potatoes to all the potlucks mm-hmm. whatever they want to say they can say anything they want and they chose to say bear one another's burdens yeah, yeah. show love for one another mm-hmm. that your face which is be not a natural a concept hill, right for like, anyone yeah you go wow it really is about yeah worship of the lord and sort of like you know what i mean it's yeah a, it's like if you have a long relationship with someone and you know that this is the last time you're going to speak, what are you going to choose to say? Yeah. You're going to say the thing that's most important. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? If I'm never going to see you again, I'm going to say something like, I I love you. I care. For, I, you know what I mean? I'm going to say something like that I want you to remember. Yeah. The last mm-hmm. time I speak to you, and I know it's the last time I'm going to speak to you, I'm going to say something that I know you'll remember that's really important, that's going to go right to the heart of what we're what we're about. Yeah. And that's what they choose to say. Yeah. No, that, I mean, what you're saying, like, you're right. Like, the whole Bible is summed up in that way. Um, but I'm even thinking about, like, at the end of Ecclesiastes, where uh, Solomon, who was regarded as uh, the wisest man in the world, right? At the end of it, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And it says, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And he's thinking in that that perspective, like, you know, I've done everything. You know, you think about it, he was probably the richest man of his time as well. So he had everything at his disposal. But at the end, you know, there's even a part of, earlier in the book where he says vanity of vanities it's it's all vain it's all nothingness right but uh he said you know fear god keep his commandments is a whole duty of man and we think there's this common principle of if you're right with god if you're if you're maintaining a right relationship with him you will also in so doing maintain a right relationship with others right so and i think that gets at what your point was is we're able to be right with others and the Bible really is a humbling book. Um, and I don't just say this to preach to the choir, but if, you know, any listener that's not a believer, maybe you're not in agreement with what uh, the Bible says, or at least what every, everything in the Bible, what it says, um, you would at least have to admit that the Bible was written in a very humble way because unlike most literary works where people try to make themselves look as good as they can for their readers – the Bible is there warts and all for the the heroes of the faith that we would regard as being giant, giant seemingly giants of men. Um, they had their failures. Uh, the Bible is full of it, right? It it doesn't just talk about their victories, but also their failures, and that's that's what separates it from it's like really any other book because people just don't do that. And so, like you were saying, the writers weren't out to say. 
you know, I think you, you rattled off a list of things they could have ended with, but they ended with a humble statement of look to others, look, look to do good by your brothers and sisters, the people around you, rather than anything about themselves. Because probably, if you think about it, obviously we, we believe that, you know, God inspired every word that was written. But even from a man's perspective, they think, I just wrote this all out on paper. Many times of these people thinking, I just wrote like all of my failures out here. They would be so humbled thinking like, here it is for, you know, the rest of the world to read for ages and ages, not even having an idea like 2,000, 4,000, sometimes years later, we'd be reading about their failures. And, you know, even if they did decide to write something in there about themselves that could be selfish, it, it, it just, it would be stained with their own present failure. But obviously they chose to magnify God rather than magnify themselves. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. All for that. Um, in perspective, the whole being greater than the sum of its parts kind of a thing. Yeah. Right? yeah and absolutely. I think that is so communicated through just the whole experience from Ge- literally from Genesis to Revelation. And it really is like, a, it's one unified message. Yeah. You know, it's like... Which is a miracle in and of itself. They have that many people writing. But it, but it was... Here's the, here's the thing. It was all directed by the same being. Directed by God. Directed so, by God. And, and that's... It's mind-blowing when you think about it. You've been listening to the Life and Faith Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Stay up to date on all our episodes. Like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.